Hi all, this is Dr. Mobeen Sayed from drbean.com. Today we'll continue our discussions about the COVID-19 and the drug that we would talk about today is the uh, itolizumab. Itolizumab is a drug that was started in India in 2006, the research started about it. And then in 2013, this drug was approved for psoriasis, a skin condition. So since then, it has been used in India. Its efficacy has been proven. Its safety margins and safety profile has been known. I think most of the adverse effects are mostly transfusion related. And now in Cuba, they have their partners, the, the Indian company Biocon have uh, their partners in Cuba for manufacturing. And Cuba has been using this drug for COVID-19. They have reported positive results. So Biocon is now given uh, they did some trial in India, and after that, they are given the go-ahead to have more trials in six of Indian hospitals. With that, Biocon is now uh, partnering with Equilium, which is a U.S. company, to see if they can start their trials here as well. So that is the basic drug that we're going to talk about. I'm going to share my screen and let us start. And meanwhile, I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and you're taking healthy food, you're keeping your immune system healthy, and you are you are good. So let's start. <clears throat> so here, itolizumab, the basic function is that it calms cytokine storm. This is the, this, this is the approach towards the uh, COVID-19. So very quickly about the drug itself, already approved for the treatment of psoriasis, approved in January 2013, it has been in production since August of 2013. It has found to be safe, and it is the most common adverse reaction is infusion reactions. Monoclonal, it is a monoclonal antibody, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. It is a humanized monoclonal antibody. It is an, an antibody which is type IgG1 type. So if I can just do it, it is IgG1 type. Cuba has already seen positive results with it. The, the way this drug works, and we will go in a deeper discussion of that a little later, but in summary, the drug targets CD6 molecule, which are present on T cells. They are present on all T cells. So by targeting the CD6 molecule and blocking them from, from connecting with the antigen presenting cells, this is how this drug inactivates or reduces the activity of T cells. And how it does that is that it binds to scavenger receptors, which are cysteine rich distal domain one of CD6. This is just technical discussion of where exactly it binds on CD6. We'll see that a little later. On the COVID-19 side, so remember this drug is actually for psoriasis, but on the COVID-19 side, Cuba has used it. They have used that in last nine days. They reported that they had used this drug in 200 cases and only two virus-related deaths. Again, I say only and I feel shy about that. Even one death is too much. Their percentage is 1%. Overall, in Cuba at this time, there are 2,428 cases, 87 deaths. And Cuba has been attributing their success to two drugs. One is the itolizumab, and the second one is another peptide that they have made in-house. Now, India is starting an open-label trial in six hospitals. And the way the trial is going to be structured, it is an open-label. That means the... the uh, Patients know the drug that is being given. Hospital staff knows the drug that is being given. So there is nothing hidden. So the ratio is going to be two people versus one patient. Two of the patients are going to, out of every three patients, two patients would receive itolizumab in addition to the standard best care. And one patient would only receive the standard best care. So that is the basic um, way the trial will be structured. India has already done a trial in which they had 30 patients in four hospitals. These were hospitalized patients and they were already COVID-19 confirmed. Out of those 30 patients, 20 were given the drug 
check this out. This is very interesting. 20 were given the drug and 10 were not. And in those 20, out of those 20, nobody died. And out of the 10 that were not given the drug, there were three deaths. So that is a significant uh, outcome. In addition to reduction in uh, or no deaths, the atolizumab also caused reduction in IL-6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha production. So if we continue on to understand how atolizumab actually works. So the mechanism is very simple. So we have been looking at macrophages. These, so macrophage or the dendritic cell or the B cell, they are called antigen presenting cells, APCs or they're also called professional antigen presenting cells because this is their role, this is their function in our body. So this is a macrophage here. And we have been discussing this thing a lot. I think now you are almost become an immunologist. Uh, I was talking with Dr. Paul Marek, the author of uh, um, Math Plus Prot Protocol, <coughs> excuse me. And he said to me, he said, uh, doctor, what do you do? You are very good with immunology. And, and for me, the more important thing was that all of the cool beans around here are now also very good with immunology. You have become immunologist in this process. So this is a macrophage. Macrophage has taken up a pathogen, for example, let's say coronavirus. Then we know that macrophage is going to present that pathogen or part of the pathogen on the MHC2 molecule or major histocompatibility complex one. So this is what macrophage is doing. When that happens on this side, the naive T cells, they will come and bind with the macrophage here with a T cell receptor. So this side is the T cell receptor. And remember we've, we've had this discussion a lot that these cells need to fall in love. They need to do some hugs and kisses before the actual activation signals will be given. And the reason for those co-stimulations is that is sort of a double check on the immune system so that immune system does not become runaway, which of course, in case of coronavirus, it sometimes does become. However, our body has a lots of double checks to make sure that before the immune system is activated, there are many, many co-stimulation or many, many signals that all verify that yes, there is a problem. So this is a primary engagement that occurs. And then what happens is many other molecules from both of the cells, they connect with each other. And these are called co-stimulations. In addition to that, there are chemical substances that are also released by both of these cells, which would then stimulate each other or verify to each other that what they're doing is the right thing. There is an infection and they need to become activated. So here, this is what is the important one for today. The naive T cell has another molecule on it, which is called CD6. CD6 or cluster of designation six, it is a protein which is present on almost all T cells, not just naive T cells. It is also present on T helper one or T helper two. Remember T helper one or two are actually the conversion of the naive T cell to T helper one or T helper two. So if the naive T cell has CD6 on it, then of course, when it converts to become a T helper one, it still has T CD6 on it. Or when it becomes T helper two, it still has CD6 on it. So the T cells, all of them have CD6 on them. So here the CD6 combines with ALCAM on the, uh, on the uh, macrophage side. So these two molecules, they combine with each other. And how to, uh, the atolizumab works, it binds to CD6 and it, it prevents CD6 from connecting with the ALCAM of the macrophage side or antigen presenting side. That keeps the co-stimulation or the verification system not to verify correctly because these extra handshakes are not occurring and that causes the immune system not to become active. In addition to that, there are CD2 that connect with LFA3. There is CD28 that connects with B7. There is LFA1 that connects with ICAM1. And there are more such adhesion molecules. So essentially, these cells fall in love and they connect and they co-stimulate each other. Now, if we continue on, this is the discussion that we've done many times. So look here, 
This is the macrophage. Macrophage, when it has the pathogen and it connects with the naive T cell, remember we talked that in the presence of IL-4, naive T cell will become T helper 2 cell, which will then release IL-4 and 5 itself, and that would cause the B cell activation. Similarly, if there is presence of IL-12, then a naive T cell becomes T helper 1 cell, which in turn will release interleukin 2, which causes cytotoxic T cell to become active. And we have done this discussion that the cytotoxic T cells would then release perforins and granzymes and kill the virally infected cells or, or cancer cells. Correct? We have also seen this in our past discussions that if there is presence of interleukin-6, interleukin-1, or interleukin, I believe, 21, then the naive T cell becomes T helper 7 cell, 17 cell. Or if there is presence of tumor growth factor beta, then the naive T cell can become T regulatory cell. Plus, keep this in mind as well, that when this pathway is engaged, then the T helper 1 cell releases interferon gamma that activates the macrophages itself. So what you're seeing here is that the innate arm, this arm, is activating the adaptive arm, and then adaptive arm in, in turn activating the or amplifying the innate arm. And I want to share a, a comment with you. Somebody wrote on, uh, on YouTube, they said, I wish to have my innate arm and adaptive arm, both of them hug you. <laughs> So they were, they were so excited. So that, that was a very cute uh, sentence. Anyway, so this is how the, the immune system becomes active and becomes amplified. Now, remember, this part of the immune system is called mature part. This was naive part, correct? This was a naive T cell. So when a naive T cell interacts with a macrophage, when they hug and kiss each other, when they stimulate each other, then the T cell, the naive T cell becomes matured. This is called the process of maturation. Once the cells are mature, they start their function. Now, what are the kind of functions that happen? The functions are, if you see here on this side of the diagram, number one, the T cell would start proliferating. What does that mean? That means that the T cell would increase in number because we need a lot of them to go and fight. It is not necessary that T cells are all present in the lung at the, in the right amount when the coronavirus hits us. So maybe there are a few T cells. The other T cells are sitting in the lymph nodes or other parts of the tissues. So then macrophages have to go and activate them. Then those T cells have to come through the bloodstream to the area of infection, then come out of the blood vessels, go to the area of infection and fight there. So for this, number one, we have to increase the number of the cells. Number two, we have to convince these cells to travel in the bloodstream. It's like they become ships and they go in the bloodstream. And then when they reach in the area of infection, where there are lots of chemotactical factors, what are chemotactic factors? These are the factors of the tissue which is broken down and the cells that are fighting there and releasing interleukins or cytokines. All those chemical substances are released in the area of infection. And these chemical substances cause the T cells and other immune system cells to adhere to the blood vessel in that area, then come out of the blood vessel that is called uh, 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 emigration, and then they walk towards this the site of infection that is called diapedesis or chemotaxis, and then they reach the site of infection and fight there. Correct? So this is the normal mechanism. Now let's see how itolizumab helps with all of this. What itolizumab basically does is it is a monoclonal humanized antibody. That means that the antibody was actually produced by putting the antigen in, an, in a mouse, for example, then the antibody that was produced in the mouse, we take that antibody, take the binding sites of the antibody, which are going to bind with the antigen, and then we replace the remaining antibody, this much part, with the human antibody so that our body does not reject them when we inject them into our body. And I've done this discussion in detail in one of the previous lectures. 
So this antibody, when given, if you see here, this CD6, this atolizumab combines with or binds with the CD6. It itself is an antibody, right? So it would go and it would connect with the CD6. It is an antibody that is targeted to CD6. So once it connects there, it will not allow these two cells to love each other. <laughs> and if you are shy about these things, today's lecture may make you blush a little bit. So it would allow not, it would make them not love each other, not co-stimulate each other, not do hugs and kisses. The result is both of them are crying now because their hearts are broken because they cannot connect. And when they cannot connect, the cytokine storm is calmed down. How is that calmed down? So that is a final discussion for today. And let's look at this. Here is what happens. I'm going to come back to this one. So look, when the naive T cell is not activated or it is less activated, it will not produce interleukins. And when the interleukins are not produced or they are produced in less quantity, then the less maturation of the cells would occur. And when there are less mature T cells, they would produce less interleukins. These interleukins that they are producing are a must to have the immune system function. For example, many of these interleukins allow the T cells to proliferate. So now when, when the atolizumab comes and makes the T cells less active, and it binds with this, their CD6, that causes the reduction in cytokine production. When the cytokine production is reduced, the cells are not going to have enough cytokines to proliferate. So number of cells, increase in number of cell is reduced. That is one. Secondly, when there is there are not enough chemokines and cytokines, then the T cell activation and walking towards the site of infection is hampered. Then even if the T cell reaches the area of infection, the T cells adhesion to the cell, to the blood vessel is hampered as well. Why? Just like these, these uh, uh, what is this, um, molecules that are adhering with each other, which is here. See these molecule here? Blood vessels have similar molecules that they express on their surfaces with which the T cells and other immune cells bind. So because atolizumab is now bound to the adhesion areas or adhesion molecules of the T cell, T cell cannot bind with the blood vessels. So it, when it cannot bind with the blood vessel, it would just zip through the blood here instead of stopping here and getting out. So we say that that will cause reduction in trafficking of the T cell. So T cell trafficking to the site of infection is reduced. Because number one, they cannot connect with the blood vessel. Number two, if they cannot connect with the blood vessel, they cannot come out or emigrate easily. Number three, even if they emigrate, they cannot walk easily. This is like if somebody is one foot or uh, have you seen the cars where when the police is giving them a, a chalan or a ticket and the car person does not pay it, the police would put a boot on the car's wheel. So this is the car, car's wheel. So let's say this is a car wheel. Police would come and they would attach a boot here with the wheel. And now the, wheel, the car cannot really move. That is the same thing that is happening here. With the adhesion molecule of the T cells, atolizumab is connected with them like a boot. It does not let them bind with other things. It does not let them walk easily. So what happens is at the end of the day, the, the T cells, cannot become active easily, they cannot become mature easily, they cannot release cytokines easily, they cannot go to the site of infection and take part in the fight easily. When they will not go to the site of infection, they will not amplify their function anymore or further function will not be amplified. All of those things would result in reduction in cytokine storm. All of these things will cause reduction or calming down of the cytokine storm. The result of that is that, can you imagine, I love this result, although it's a small study, out of 30 patients, 20 patients given this drug, none of them died. 
10 patients did not get this drug and three of them died. All were COVID positive, all were hospitalized. So this I think is a, is a great drug and I am very happy about this drug that it is, it is out there. So this is the discussion for today. Fast discussion, but I think it is an interesting one. Here is, here is some good news for the cool beans. This Wednesday, we'll have Dr. Paul Marek, which is the author of Math Plus Protocol with us at this time, six o'clock. And then the next day, we'll have Dr. Zelenko with us, with his Zelenko protocol. The only thing, please note that he will be able to be with us at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That means 11 a.m. Pacific time. So seven hours before this time. So on Thursday, we'll go live seven hours earlier than this time, and we'll have him with us. So after that, hopefully next week, we'll have Dr. Bruce Patterson and some more doctors who would come and discuss various therapies that they have for COVID-19. This is the discussion. Any questions, any comments? And please, my request to you, as always, please like, subscribe, and share. Yes, yeah, so Chantal, this is a very good question. Yes, atolizumab can be administered to folks who have comorbidities. Again, uh, at the end of the day, it depends at what kind of comorbidities, but it has been used in psoriasis and in all kinds of comorbidities, I'm sure, have been treated with it. So it should not be too dangerous for them. Abdu says, so Abdu, you had put a comment yesterday that I do not respond to you. Uh, really, I respond to whoever I can. So it's not that I was ignoring you. What is the body response to this drug as it is not fully humanized and can this affect the first dose? No, so the thing is this, it is humanized. It is not chimeric, it is humanized drug. So the body's response is uh, minimal and it has been out there in India for 2013. It has been used there without any adverse reactions other than infusion-based reactions. And I think these are milder things to take care of. So James says that it sounds like this drug essentially shuts down or reduces the entire immune system. This seems to be both good and bad, less antibodies and somewhat similar to the use of corticosteroid. Is, is there no not a better way to balance out the dysfunction of a runaway immune system? Q2, yes, agree, great drug, but is it is the study too small? Yes, totally excited about Dr. Marek, very cool. So very good. So the <coughs> first question, these drugs that are similar to steroids and still better are the reason for them to be better is steroids have a very large uh, or expansive role. They are glucocorticoid. They take care of the carbohydrate me metabolism. They take care of the mineral, mineral me metabolism, sodium and water metabolism. Because of that, giving steroid can be harmful. Although for a short period of time, I don't think that is that harmful. These drugs have similar actions, but they do not have such broad activity on the rest of the body. That is why these drugs can be used. Here, the interesting thing is atolizumab does not do much to the innate arm, and it reduces the activity of the acquired arm and balances it out. So that is interesting, but it is lesser um, expansive as steroid. Steroid would bring down the innate arm as well. Steroid can cause a total shutdown. Your second question was, um, yes, uh, agree, but drug, but is it, yes, the study is too small. It is 30 people. So that is why they're doing more studies. They're going to do more trials in six hospitals. I hope that the result of those are useful and, and um, valuable. So there is a question from Michael that, will the approval of itolizumab make lironlimab obsolete? Does itolizumab act as an antiviral like lironlimab? Will it help long haulers? So the good question, again, the mechanism of action is, outcome is similar. Lironlimab was blocking the CCR5 and CCL5 interaction. That is also important for the chemotaxis of the cells to come into the site of infection and fight. This drug is putting a boot on a, on a different molecule, but still causing the immune cells. It is causing, inhibiting the immune cell to come over to the site of infection and fight. So they both have a similar outcome in that way. So uh, 
I don't know if the Leron Limab will become out obsolete, but they both have a similar mechanism of action, similar outcome. I should not say mechanism of action. Their mechanism of actions are different. Outcomes are very similar. <laughs> both cats are here. I thought that they would not be mewing that much, but Luffy is sitting right over there and mewing, and the Kairi went upstairs and is mewing from there. Um, so then the question is, will atolizumab help long haulers? Um, the problem with the long haulers is that the there is a there is a baseline immune system which is amplified and continuing to work. So definitely it would help there, uh, just like steroids have been helping there. So to your answer to your question, Michael, yes, it would help the long haulers as well. I hope I hope fingers crossed that its actions are proved, the trials are successful, and the results are good. They as good as a small study, and if that is the case, it would be a wonderful drug. What I do not know is the price of this. So anybody from India who knows the price, please, can you put that price in the comments down here? So the, uh, there is a question about the from Kent about the defensins. Defensins are <clears throat> another uh, set of molecules in the immune system, at least in this structure here that we're talking about, defensins are not involved. Defensins are mostly involved on the innate arm side. James Kelly, you're very welcome. Uh, want to hear about statin. So Sashi, yes, I know you've been talking about statin for some time. So people have been asking me to talk about statins. So maybe tomorrow we'll talk about statins and their role in the COVID-19. Um, Susan, you're most welcome. Um, Abdu says that, thanks, uh, can this drug be used in early phase and can we talk about success of phase four clinical trials and vaccine in Russia? Definitely we can talk about the phase four clinical trials in Russia. Russia has been saying that we have the very first vaccine that has passed all the clinical trial before production, and they have gone in production with the vaccine. So they're saying the world's first vaccine that is out there. And I was curious, I said, why world's first? There are many other vaccines too. And the answer was that because this is the first fully approved, fully, fully trialed, fully vetted vaccine that is out there. So Abdul will talk about that as well. So there's a question from uh, Cool Hat, a non-related question I had for a while. For an asymptomatic person, for how many days he would come positive before a possible exposure, after a possible exposure? So the normal is two days to 14 days. Mean is 5.1 days. So about five within five days, a person should develop symptoms if they are going to develop symptoms. Outlier is 24 days. So that means in some people, even 24 days after the exposure, they have developed the symptoms. So normally two to 14 days, 50% of the population will have symptoms within five days. And sometimes people have symptoms up to 24 days. Monolucast, okay, we can talk about the statins. So there is a comment here that in India, its price is 8,000 in, uh, Indian rupees per vial, which is not a lot. Um, I think it's very, it's small in uh, dollars. So that's not bad. So the um, mentioned that the cost is 109 in US dollars. That is excellent. I love it. So there's another question. As time goes on, will antibodies start showing up in IVG treatment? I already get monthly hoping so. Possibly, yes. Yes. I think we are reaching a point where now the antibodies, vaccines, and such drugs are going to become more prevalent. I hope that the monoclonal antibodies become available soon as well. Israel had been doing some good work. Other countries are doing some good work as well. So hopefully they would be available too. Uh, there is a question from Shawan that role of dexamethasone. So look, dexamethasone, I've done a discussion about that. The only errata in the dexamethasone lecture is that where I had to put T helper one, I put the T helper two and I reverse the roles. So that was my mistake in the dexamethasone, but I've done a discussion about dexamethasone. I think that there is a role for steroids uh, in this uh, disease. And that is a very important role. Look, we are not gonna give steroids for a very long time. It's a short window of time in which steroids are given. So their after effects or their side effects can be con contained. So steroids are very, very important as well in this. Math plus protocol says methylprednisolone, uh, dexamethasone from Oxford, 
in general, I believe steroids have a positive role in it. So there is a question here. There's a comment here. Uh, a great many studies are now coming in on the massive widespread thrombosis and the efficacy of anticoagulation. Future topic, I have already done three lectures about it, three talks about it, where we talked about in detail how the anticoagulation, how the coagulation occurs because of this virus, what is the mechanism of that, and how anticoagulants help. We have done many, many uh, talks about it. So Randy says that have you gone over have you gone over niacin yet? No, not yet. So that is a good topic. I should talk about that. Excellent. So guys, thank you very much for joining, and uh, we will continue tomorrow. Maybe we'll talk about statins, or maybe we'll talk about um, some other medicine. Please let me know, or the or the vaccine in Russia. Uh, just please give me a comment. What would you like? Day, day after, please remember Dr. Paul Marek, author of Math Plus Protocol. And the day after that, on Thursday, Dr. Zelenko will be with us, but the time will be different. It will not be 6 o'clock. It will be 2 o'clock in the evening, Eastern time zone. Our time will be 11 in the morning. So seven hours before this time, we will have Dr. Zelenko. Please don't miss it. And if you have any questions for any of those doctors or for both of them, please write them down here. I would ask them those questions. Thank you very much. Stay safe and healthy. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.